There were few more iconic, successful or talented jockeys than Terry Biddlecombe, whose death has been announced and who was a good friend of Bruff Scott, who joins me now. Um, Bruff, tell me about the Terry Biddlecombe that you, you knew during those race riding days. Oh, Terry Biddlecombe was the Prince Hal of my generation. Right. Uh, he, was, he, he was larger than life and I can remember the first time I saw him, he'd come back from Carlisle and David Nicholson who was with him, sort of senior, shaking his head and said, Terry apparently had passed out at the at Scotch Corner. And he'll never last. <laughs> <laughs> he was always going to never last, but he, he had an extraordinary career, but he did live life, I mean, completely to the full. I mean, he and Josh Gifford, when Josh Gifford was champion jockey, and they were also champion jockeys, I mean, they would literally ride winners at Ludlow, drive to London. I remember one particular evening, I'm not sure I didn't go on with them, but it would kill me. I could, and they would go out in London, all sorts of things happened, end up in the Turkish bars where they'd basically have a sweat off some of the, uh, and then wrap themselves up. And this would be two o'clock in the morning, be up at six to go and ride schooling somewhere and then go off again. And they might do this two or three times a week. Really? And they wouldn't be on orange juice. <laughs> uh, and he was, he was extraordinary, enormously talented, incredibly strong. Eddie Harty, who was, a, you know, was an Olympic rider as well as a Grand National winning jockey, yeah. I remember having lunch with him. He said to me, he thought that Terry at his best was the best rider he'd ever seen. The thing is that Terry quite often wasn't his best for wasting and various other things. He also had these terribly badly broken uh, wrists. So it's extraordinary. His system, he had, he had both wrists and cases. He used to basically push both arms like that. But he, he, was, he, his, he was tall, but he was, he was really very, very athletic. The first time I ever rode a racehorse was on the top of Cleve Hill, and Terry Billick was riding out for Freddie Nicholson, and he was in front of me. And I still have the image of this young blonde guy, the blonde bomber, as they used to call him, just the ease with which he rode a thoroughbred. I remember thinking, God, you know, I'd love to be able to ride like that. I never did, but you know, one could, could aspire to it. But he was a, he was a terrific cat in the sort of in the way when the yeah you know, it's a different age, but come on, up we go. Mm. He was a sort of he was a sort of professional son in a way of, of, of Tim Brookshaw, sort of very much a farming family. Get on and ride and go out there and drink after something else. I mean, you know, we used to get up some pretty wild jaunts, but he was. A, he was extraordinary, very generous hearted. I mean, one day I remember getting knocked out at Haydock and you know, he took me home and I was sort of woke up in his house. I can tell you in those days, I went and rode again on Monday. You know, I mean, she didn't, she didn't know any better. Incredibly strong. I remember one day, for instance, at, um, at uh, Stratford, after the end of the season, we were fooling about in some sort of donkey derby and we were in a changing in a sort of gym. Mm. And I got a dumbbells out mm. and got them on my back and I couldn't pick it up. And Ter came across and just picked it off. And again, I remember thinking, hmm, you know, I was a professional jockey by then, he's a bit stronger than me. Enormous strength, great uh, understanding of a horse, uh, great eye for a stride. Um, he was, it, it was a, a, it looked more crash bang than it was. Uh, he was actually very skillful too. Um, but he was never going to last because he was big body which got hurt and it was a big body that got a bit abused in a sense in, and, in what he did with it. At the time, was that accepted that he was abusing his body and perhaps risking his talent? Well, yes, but uh, you are absolutely rightly speaking in the way we would now. But then? In those days, you know, it was slightly, um, you know, People would have a little bottle of beer, I think, below the, the table and mm. sort of thing, have a drink, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was going, he took me, we were both riding in the Midlands Grand National and uh, both had to do light. So we went, this is a glamorous morning. We spent the morning in the Turkish baths in Stoke. Uh, <laughs> as you do. As we do. We're then driving and I'm sort of first season professional and he's, you know, sort of Prince Hal. And on the way to Utoxida, he said, ah, we've got to stop for a sharp. And we went into the pub and he ordered the drinks, and this is what we needed. This is your sort of, um, you know, LucasAid version. And what it was, was a baby sham and brandy. <laughs> so I remember asking him, sort of, why is this, Terry? He said, ah, oh, he said, the, the, the baby shams, they give you a bit of fizz, and, and the brandies, they give you a bit of kick. Uh, anyway, off we went to ride the Midlands Grand National. I can tell you, we, 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 we both fell. And there's a picture somewhere 
of me and him coming back both on the same horse. Uh, he gave me a lift back on his horse. But uh, he, was a, he was a terrific figure. And it was just a sadness that in a sense it couldn't last. Uh, and a huge happiness when, because as we know, drink got him in a bad way, that he teamed up with Henrietta and then he had this second life yeah. to everybody's knowledge with Henrietta and the whole best mate Hen and Terry saga, which was a, a superb happiness, which was shared with everybody, but particularly for those of us who knew and loved him in his pomp, to see him re-emerge was, was terrific. And that picture of, of Hen and Terry embracing after Best Mate's Third God Cup with Terry clearly in tears, um, that is one of the lasting images of jump racing in the last, last 10, 20 years. Oh, yes, and he, I mean, you know, he, he was... Um, uh, freely moved to tears, <laughs> like Josh Gifford too. Josh Gifford and he, but he was a, he he, he had tremendous presence uh, and you know great talent. It was not a long-lasting talent, and uh, let's be quite clear, Prince Hal never could be.